guys welcome to all of you on our channel that is achieve ias so friends as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purposes we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so in this video we will be talking about our prelim series in which what we do we daily discuss some questions relating to your prelims 2020 so name of this series is let's solve some questions for prelims 2020 so as is clear from its name this series is not just about solving the questions but it is also about your participation so we do expect that you people will participate in this series and uh, if you have any additional information then do share in the comment box uh, you will uh, you are more than welcome so let's start our discussion so today we will be discussing uh, the topic of uh, uh, polity so the questions will be from polity so the first question is consider the following about the office of UPSC chairman first she is appointed by the department of personal and training on the recommendation of UPSC members second the chairman must serve a fixed term post appointment even if retirement is due third she can be removed by a resolution passed by a majority of UPSC members and agreed to by the union cabinet fourth a UPSC member can be reappointed re as the chairman so we have to choose the correct answer so friends uh, uh, only one statement is correct and that is uh, the fourth statement that is UPSC can be UPSC member can be reappointed as a chairman so uh, the, let's see what are the details uh, so details are that uh, she is appointed by the president on the recommendation of union cabinet uh, union council of ministers so there is no fixed tenure that a chairman must uh, serve uh, post appointment so chairman can serve until uh, she attains the uh, age of 65 years or uh, can uh, can hold the office for maximum uh, uh, six years so whichever is earlier so uh, she she can then uh, uh, serve for that tenure so uh, he or she can be removed by the president based on a supreme court inquiry so let's move to the next question next is your fourth uh, second question uh, in india which of these matters come under the state list of the seven scheduled to the indian constitution a uh, education b forests c irrigation d banking so friends the answer is c that is irrigation so irrigation comes under uh, your uh, seventh schedule uh, and uh, it is under the state list uh, 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 this education is there in concurrent list and uh, uh, rest of the details let's see so uh, Union list includes subjects of national importance such as defense of the country, foreign affairs, banking, communications and currency. State list uh, 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 contains subjects of state and local importance such as police, trade, commerce, agriculture and irrigation. And concurrent list includes subjects of common interest to both uh, the union cabinet as well as the state governments such as education, forests, trade trade unions marriage adoption and succession it's success uh, succession so uh, this uh, both the union as well as the state governments can make laws of the on the subjects are mentioned in the list so now let's move to the next question what is the next question so next question is your uh, which of the following is our key features of federalism so here we have been asked the key features of federalism first different tires of government govern the same citizens but each tire has its own jurisdiction uh, second each tire of government must draw all its financial resources independent of the other third the existence and authority of each tier of government generally is constitutionally granted for the vision of powers between state units uh, uh, cannot be arbitrarily manipulated by any one tier or any one tier of government alone so we have to choose the correct answer so correct statements are uh, friends uh, first statement is correct uh, third statement is also correct and fourth is also correct so uh, this uh, uh, second statement is not correct because uh, uh, the uh, different tires of government are interdependent upon each other for the for for uh, for uh, for this uh, 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 your uh, financial resources. So uh, let's see the explanation. So st each tire has its own jurisdiction in specific matters, legislation, taxation, and administration. And tires may be dependent upon each other. However, not completely, else it erodes autonomy. So statement two uh, is incorrect. So, Statement 4 is that fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government. Such changes require the consent of both uh, levels of the government. 
so now let's move to the next question next is your uh, uh, fourth is if state laws and subjects mentioned in the concurrent list uh, conflict with a central law which of these follows a the state law prevails over central law if the state legislature passes its passes uh, passes it again with the special majority b the central law prevails over the state law c the matter is moved to the supreme court which decides on the validity of the respective laws in the larger national interest and uh, d is the matter is referred to the governor whose decision shall be final and binding in this regard so we have to choose the correct answer so friends the answer is clearly b so this is quite easy question so you might be aware of the fact that in case of conflict between the state and the central laws the law of the um, uh, center prevails so now let's uh, move on uh, this uh, uh, explanation is that the constitution provides a scheme for demarcation of powers through three lists on the seventh schedule but the constitution also provides primacy to the parliament on concurrent list items so if there is a conflict between state and central law then the central law will uh, take uh, prevail now let's move on to the uh, next question uh, the last question of the day uh, the last question is the lieutenant governor of delhi is appointed by a the president on the advice of ministry of home affairs b the legislative assembly of delhi on the advice of the ut uh, uh, union territory council of ministers c the chief minister of delhi after consulting a collegium consisting of chief justice chief justice of the delhi high court and other senior judges d delhi development authority after obtaining consent from the president of india so we have to choose the correct answer so it is quite easy so lieutenant governor is appointed by uh, the president on the advisory of ministry of home affairs so your uh, uh, answer is a so this is your explanation and uh, lieutenant governor is the administration uh, administrator of delhi appointed by the president at the recommendation of union home ministry so especially for new delhi lieutenant governor has additional powers that is land and law and order uh, are vested in him considering the strategic importance of capital uh, of new delhi and all acts passed by legislative assembly require a uh, lieutenant governor's approval where there is a difference of opinion between assembly and lieutenant governor the matter is referred to the president so this is uh, your uh, all about your today's uh, video or today's discussion so friends uh, let me tell you that we have different series on our channel uh, through which uh, we are targeting your uh, we are covering your syllabus in a time bound manner for example we have geography ncert series we have history ncert series we have polity ncert series and then we have standard book series so in all these series uh, we are covering your syllabus in a time bound manner so you are daily given a target to read so as you can see in uh, uh, in this uh, 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 presentation shown before you so you are daily given a target so daily 10 questions are given to you from the given target and uh, uh, based upon the number of days that are allocated to each subject uh, you get 10 mcqs daily and uh, if for example we have allocated 60 days for indian polity by m lakshmi kamp so 16 to 10 then you get 600 questions based on that book so in this way you have, we cover your uh, uh, slavers in a time bound manner uh, so uh, what is the benefit of uh, uh, joining such seri uh, such series that are run by us uh, so these uh, few friends might be aware of the fact that these books are basically the foundations of your preparation so each and every topic from these books will be covered so this will ensure the coverage of entire slavers through mcqs mode and also it will ensure discipline in your studies because most of the students they are not in urban areas so they are preparing from uh, they are preparing from home so uh, mostly the issue they face is lack of self-discipline so this self-discipline is ensured by a time-bound coverage of the your slavers and unless and until you don't follow time-bound approach you find it difficult to cover your entire slavers because you know that you the slavers of UPSC is quite wide so and then also if you cover it the the slavers in a time-bound manner uh, then also you get the much needed confidence which you must have to crack this examination uh, because the uh, time uh, this time-bound preparation in which you will get daily targets and in the evening you will have have to attempt the questions and their answers this uh, this ensures that you uh, that you do uh, that you cover that you cover your slavers uh, in a proper time framework so also then uh, you might be aware of the fact that uh, 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 these books are widely recommended by various top uh, toppers so we are not uh, covering any other sources we are covering your standard books so standard books co will be covered so you will be getting questions from them so you will be completing your standard books in a time-bound manner and also then 
na mere reading is not enough you must know the pattern of the upsc and how the upsc ask questions how the questions are framed uh, so that demands uh, uh, the solving of the questions because uh, only not only so, uh, reading is enough because reading is what is done by a general reader also who is interested in knowing about india so you must uh, must uh, uh, be in a you must read in a manner that uh, you are uh, uh, you prepare according to the uh, upsc standard so in the, for that uh, you must uh, must uh, uh, solve the questions and then other thing is that a disciplined preparation gives you much needed self confidence and uh, uh, now is the best time to start uh, because uh, and to cover your syllabus because your prelims is just 6 months away so we can't say 6 months it's already 5 months and 10 days left for your prelims and i don't know if you are waiting for anything then what that thing is so if in case you are interested then do ensure that you check the description box because the links of all the series are are given there and also uh, you can check the in the description box about the details of these series and also you can join a telegram channel the link of which is shown on your screen so in this telegram channel we have more than 15000 subscribers so in fact we we are close to uh, uh, to reach the mark of 16000 so if you uh, on this telegram channel we share various public resources that we have for csc preparation so if in case you want to get access uh, want to want to get the access of such resources then you are more than welcome to join our telegram channel and you will get the link in the description box and also the discussion of uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, the pdfs of these questions are also uploaded there on our telegram channel so do ensure that you check the description box and this is all about today's video uh, i hope you have like you would have liked it and also ensure that you if liked if you liked it please do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead